Wow, it gives me great pleasure to welcome the former captain of Orlando Pirates, Ike's Cape Town, and the Zimbabwe national team, Dina Edelbert. How's it, Captain? I'm okay, my man. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. You know, we last heard from you, uh, or we last saw you, when you were still uh, playing football actively at, uh, you know, the highest level. What about in the world are you now, and what are you, what are you up to? Um, I'm in Jovic. I'm based in Jovic, and... Uh... I've got an academy that um, I, I am involved with. Uh, it's called Shumba Football uh, Development. So I'm trying to give back to the kids that have, uh, that wants to pursue their uh, soccer careers. Mm, all right, that is absolutely exciting. So I see that you played for Caps United in your native Zimbabwe. How did you end up in South Africa? Because you played for that seven star site that was amalgamated with. Um, Cape Town space to form Ajax Cape Town. So how did you end up in South Africa? You know, the, the, the funny thing is that um, I was playing for the national team mm -hmm. and um, I think we were playing against uh, Namibia, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, there was a certain guy who actually came to me after the game and said that uh, um, Money Rangers, they are interested in you. So is it okay? And then I said to him, no, it's fine. Uh, you can talk to my, to my chairman at uh, Capes United. So as soon as we he got back to the hotel and then the chairman uh, said to me, listen, I got a call from a guy called Rob Moore. He watched you play. Uh, oh, Rob Moore, the owner, the owner of Seven Stars. Yes, the owner of Seven Stars. So he wants you to fly to South Africa tomorrow, the following day. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay, no, that's fine. So that's how it happened. So they, they watched me play uh, on TV. And then I, I came to South Africa and, you know, went to Cape Town. Uh, at that time, the coach was Gavin Knight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I got there on Monday. And then on Tuesday, we played a friendly. And then Gavin said, he wants to sign me. And then I was, I, I was signed on, on that very same day, on Tuesday. Mm. And then that's how I came to South Africa and played for Serious Stars. Mm, the names of the people that you're mentioning, we know that they've got a great eye for talent. So it means that you were a terrific footballer from the time they spotted you as well. Because if you talk about Rob Moore, I think was Benny McCarthy's agent. Gavin Hunt is the one who gave Benny McCarthy his debut during his time at Seven Stars. And you can mention a lot of players. That Seven Stars team, you know, no one would have thought um, when we look at them now, you know, um, 20 or 30 years later, we would... Uh, credit them for producing so many superstars. I mean, Dylan Shepard was there, if I'm not mistaken. You were there, Benny yeah. McCarthy, a young Ricardo Katza went on to Captain Supersport United, won back-to-back -back league titles. I mean, Gavin Hunt was the coach. Uh, how good was that team? And did you foresee the potential that they had when it comes to producing so many superstars and so many coaches as well? Yes, I think we had a very good team uh, that, uh, that time, Senior Stars. And uh, the good thing was that when we finished the, the league, I think we were fourth on the log. I think we finished fourth on the log. And then uh, that that season, uh, when the end of the season, that's when Seven Stars and Cape Town Spurs merged to form IS Cape Town. And then, I mean, if you remember that following year, uh, that, that following season, that's when it was a top four. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it uh, I can't remember if it was Iwisa or, you know, there was a cup that was being played by the top four. Yeah. So luckily because... We finished in the top four, and then we end up playing in in that uh, in that tournament. Oh, but, I, 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 remember, know, I remember that tournament because I think I kept on beach chief. It was Ibiza, yes. It was Ibiza. Ibiza. Spectacular. And then you lost to yes. Pirates in the final. Sam Pem Jr. had just joined you from Orlando Pirates. Yes, 100%. 100%. Yes, I remember. Yeah. I remember so, yeah. so I think I think we also played against KZ Chiefs, and then we won on penalties. Uh, yeah. That's where we lost in, in the final year. But... Uh, the, the great Seven Stars team that we had, it was a very good team. I think uh, Rob Moore had uh, assembled a very, a very, because if you remember, Junaid Adley was also there. And then Fanny Madiga came on later on to, to join us uh, uh, that season. And then uh, we had also the likes of uh, Jeremiah Jensen, as you, made, I mean, as you mentioned, uh, Ricardo Katza, uh, Dylan Shepard, Kaitano Tembo also was also part of that, uh, of, of that team. Bennett Masinga, and uh, you know, so the team that that we 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 had was a very good team, and we we competed with uh, almost the entire league 
you know, uh, even with the so-called big teams, and uh, we managed to to finish fourth in that season. That must have been absolutely fantastic for you. And then now you went on to join um, Orlando Pirates, and uh, yeah, how did that move come about? I think you are part of that team that also beat Pirates. I, I think I have to mention this: that beat Pirates in the Rotman Cup final. I think you gave us because I'm a Pirates fan. You gave us four one or something. <laughs> yes, yes. I think uh, we played. I think we played uh, two cups in that season with uh, Orlando Pirates. I think it was we. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure which one was the first, but we also played Pirates. Uh, I think the BP Cup final, <laughs> and then we lost. Yeah, we lost two one, and I remember uh, that. Uh, I, I, I remember the storyline um, that is attached to that. I think Pirates won the PP Top 8 and Gordy Nickerson's daughter was getting married. He had to be picked up from yeah. the stadium to go and attend his daughter's uh, wedding. And then you played us in the final. I think there was a replay because there was this rule that if a final ends in a draw, it has to be replayed. And then yeah. Yeah. you gave Pirates 4-1. Yes, I think, okay, let me start with the, with the BP. I don't know if it's, uh, whether I should start with the BP or or um, Rothmans. What if I want but, to start okay, but with the with the BP, the, the, the funny thing was that uh, you know, as we all know, that uh, gave, I mean, uh, Gordon Nigerson's daughter was 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 getting married on on that day, and then I think it was one one um, in the ninety minutes, and then we had to go to extra time. So the funny thing, I can't remember who the referee was at that time, but uh, Paris got a dubious penalty. That was a <laughs> what, and then I. To make it easy for Kevin Hunt, I'm sorry for Cody Nickerson to, to attend the, the, the wedding. Yeah, that's 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 the that's the story. Like when I to go and ask the as the captain, I went to ask the referee, like please, that can be a penalty. Then he said, listen, the game has to to end. Gordon Nickerson must attend the, the his uh, 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 daughter's uh, wedding. I'm like, oh, so is that the reason why you give them a penalty? Then I said, take it how you want it, but it's a penalty. I'm like, oh, oh, wow, okay. And then we lost. We lost in the. We lost that game uh, two one. Uh, but then you know uh, the Rotman's Cup final. I think we played. We played in the afternoon, and then it was uh, it was one one. And then so when they said that the replay is going to be played on Wednesday night, because remember from Cape Town when we were used to you know playing most of our games at night, and then when we play at night, you know that Ajax you get the best out of Ajax. So when we heard that we play. At uh, I think it was eight o'clock, mm -hmm. and on Wednesday night, and then you know we told ourselves that there is no way that Paris is going to beat us. There is no way. And then funny, funny enough, we 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 beat them. We gave them a very good forward. And then I think after that, towards the end of the season, that's when now John called me and said, "Listen, I would love you to stay at Ajax, but uh, Paris they came up with a very good offer for the club and for yourself." So I think for you, it would be good so that you grow your career and you know, to play for one of the biggest clubs in, in, in Africa, it would, be, it would be good for you. So that's how I went to join Orlando Pirates. Mm. And how did you feel about being sold by Ajax? Oh, well, at that, time, at that time, I felt great because if I remember correctly, I was the most expensive foreigner uh, to to be sold to, to Orlando Pirates in South Africa at that time. So I felt great and I felt that uh, I think also it's high time that I go and join the, the masses, you know, the, the biggest club in, in Africa and then show if I am who I say I am, you know, uh, with, the, with the good players and see if I can be able to, to compete with them. So, but I felt great and it was a, it was a great honor to go and play for, for, for Orlando Pirates. Mm, and Orlando Pirates, when they won the league in 2002, 2003, were you already part of the team? Yes. Yes, with uh, Roy Barreto. Hey, Roy Barreto, yes. And then I remember in the following preseason, Pirates played Tottenham Hotspur. That's when Mabizela got snapped up by the yes. you know, Tottenham Hotspur management. And yeah, that, that's when Mabizela, yeah, that's when he was uh, scouted by, by the... the, the, the uh, Tottenham Hotspur uh, scouts and uh, he played very well. I think you know that's what I always say to the to my boys even at the academy. Like right? you know when you play a game, play like it's your last game because you never know who's watching. Mm -hmm. So I think old John uh, deserved it. He played his heart out and uh, that's why he got scouted and then went on to play for Tottenham Hotspur. Mm. 
must have been nice uh, rubbing shoulders with the best. And what can you tell us about those trips to Africa? Because we know that Pirates is a team that has always been associated with representing South Africa in CAF competitions. How were those trips and are there any maybe interesting or funny stories that you'd like to share with us? Um, no, it, it's, it was great. I mean, um, because I think maybe if not uh, four or five guys in the, in the team, because remember when we played with our national teams, we used to go, you know, we used to travel also and play in different countries. So for us, it wasn't um, much of a, a, a big deal because we used to play in those, in those countries, but, but with other guys. So we had to help them out in terms of uh, adjusting and uh, playing in those, in those uh, conditions. But uh, I remember, I think uh, we were playing in the Champions League. Uh, I think we were in Sudan. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we, we were playing in Sudan. Uh, we, when we go to the hotel, I think that was the only time that we saw outside because that place is blazing hot. So all the time we were always in the hotel with the fan on and I was sharing a room with, uh, you know, Lucky Lequat. So we were always, we were always, all the time in the room and never got out. So by the time we went on to, to play um, the game, it was, it was different. It was different because being used to stay in the, in the room with the aircon on and then going outside now at night, we play the game and it's 35 degrees of which 35 degrees yeah. this side is, yeah, it's, uh, it's something that we consider very, very hot. So to, to them at night, 35 degrees, it was, it's warm. It's okay. It's, I mean, it's, uh, it's a little bit cooler, sorry. It's a little bit cooler. So hey, the first five minutes, we were already, like we were dripping wet, like we were sweating. And we asked ourselves if ever we're going to finish this game or we, we are going to, to get beaten. But, you know, we told ourselves that we came here for a win and uh, we did exactly that. And then we won one nil. But the place is, Sudan is very hot. It's very hot. I think the people there, you know, we were laughing that the people there, they are not black. They're actually dark blue because, <laughs> you know, if you're black, uh, it, can be, it can be, you can't, you can't have that color. So, yeah, but it was okay. It was a very good experience for, for, for everyone they at, uh, at Orlando Pirates. Mm. Must have been interesting. Z uh, Zimbabwe, your country, is known as one of the best countries yeah. when it comes to natural raw talent, always likened to Brazil and South Africa, you know, and Argentina, South American countries as well. Why do you think Zimbabwe has underachieved uh, over the years? Because if you look at the players, I mean, your knowledge, Musona, yourself, Inasha Nengomashe, Kama Billiard, you know, the names just roll off the tongue. But when it comes to playing continental competitions, uh, Zimbabwe seems to struggle, just like South Africa. What's the problem? It's, it's, a very, it's very difficult. I, I think um, I would say there are too many egos uh, when it comes to the national team. Because, um, you know, I think it's a matter of saying where I'm coming from and where I play. Uh, instead of us uh, coming together as one and represent the nation and, uh, you know, uh, have one goal in common that we are all here for the, for the national team. So let's all play our hearts out and forget about where you're coming from and where you, where you play and then be able to, to win. I think that also plays a, a major role in, uh, in, the, in the player's mind. I think if we can, if we can leave that behind and have one purpose, I think, will be able to, to go far. And, you know, as for Zimbabwe producing so many talent, uh, talented players, it, it has been always, even before us, I mean, we have seen okay. very good, uh, uh, yeah, that played before us and still the very same thing that uh, we didn't go far. And I think if we can have that mind, if we can erase that mind and focus on the nation, I think we'll be able to, to go far. Mm. And the Pirates team as well that uh, you played for, I think in 2006 under Militin Sredojevic, uh, better known as Micho to his, uh, you know, football fans, you guys reached the semifinals uh, of the CAF Champions League. I mean, what was the missing ingredient? 
because you seem to be playing good football. Even under Costa and Papi, you were playing, you, I mean, fantastic football. But when it comes to the end product, you'd always reach the final, finish second, reach against different opponents. What was, what, what was the missing ingredient? I think it was, it was a case of saying that we have made it and not, not forgetting that the race is not yet uh, finished. I mean, if you look at the Champions League, you know, playing in the final, like, oh, wow, okay, we are here, we have done it. So I think forgetting that now, the job is not yet done, we need to win the cup. And then that's where now the players tend to relax because they are already in the final. And uh, so now you would see that the attitude is totally different from um, you know, semis and you know, playing the quarters and uh, round robins, it is totally changed because now we're in the final. So now we can relax now because we're in the final and then now we'll take it as, as uh, the game goes. But now if only had the same attitude and the mindset before the final, I think we would have won uh, um, the cup and also like as, as you said, that you know, with Papich, we were playing uh, uh, beautiful football, but we didn't win anything. I think also the same thing, like you know, that shocked us also that oh wow, we played 17 games unbeaten. Wow, we so we are there. So when you go to the next game, I think that's when uh, everything started falling apart because the attitude was not the same. You know, the mentality was not the same also because we've been telling ourselves that uh, 17 games unbeaten. There's nobody that has, has done it before. So we we are we are the ones. So not forgetting that we still have a long way to go. So that disturbed the, the momentum of the team. That's why we started uh, uh, losing games. All right, Eddie, uh, let's discuss the current Orlando Pirates side now. I think they also unbeaten in the opening uh, few games of the season. They have won the M10-8. Do you see them uh, dethroning Mamelo de Sundowns in their league uh, domestic league dominance and do you see them i mean how far do you see them going this season no they've, they've assembled a very good squad uh a squad that is capable of of beating anyone in the in the league i think it also now it's it boils down now to the players to exactly tell themselves exactly what is it that they want mm -hmm. because if you look at uh the, the current squad now compared to Sundowns, pound to pound, I think they can match. I think it's a it's a team that will be capable of beating even uh, Mamelo de Sundowns uh, mm -hmm. hands down. But now, as I said, it's up to the players that, you know, the, the, the coach can only do so much, but then in the end, it's all up to the players in the field of play. What do you want? What do you want to, to, to achieve? I think that's, that's, uh, that's, that's where between the two teams, who wants it more is going to, to win the games because I can see them, you know, pound to pound, as I said, pound to pound with Sundowns. They can, they can beat Sundowns. Mm. All right, uh, before we wrap up, your passion um, right now or your next move, like, are you quite content with just producing the youngsters or maybe you want to become a head coach or a team manager at the highest level as well? Or maybe your passion lies with... Uh, you know, developing the talent? I think for now, I want to concentrate in producing these youngsters um, and at the same time, helping them to, to achieve their dreams and uh, their careers. But if anything comes up, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will grab it when, it, I mean, as long as it's a, uh, it's uh, football related. I would, I would definitely grab it. But for now, I think my mind is uh, on helping these uh, these youngsters. I mean, it's uh, it will be something great, you know, to pinpoint the players when you see them on the TV that I once coached this boy and I once helped this boy. Now this is where where he is. I think it's a it's a great feeling. That's exactly what I want to have. All right. Last question: Who who do you support in the English Premier League? Arsenal. <laughs> the Gunners of London. I, listen, yes, I, I totally understand that uh, we're going through a rough patch, but, uh, you know, I've been an Arsenal supporter for uh, for as long as I remember. Just because we're going through a rough patch, that doesn't mean that I have to to ditch them and then support other teams. But I'm an Arsenal loyal fan. Uh, I'll, I will keep on supporting them and uh, we will definitely bounce back.
All right, let, let, let me show you who I support, uh, the mighty Manchester United. All right. <laughs> thank you so much, man. Uh, thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. And we'll... Pardon? No, I'm, I'm saying it's okay that you support uh, Man United. And I think it's a team that is also doing very well. But uh, winning the league... Manchester United, not now. I think they are in the uh, building phase. So in maybe two or three years' time, that's when now you can talk about winning the league. All right. Uh, Eddie, Dina, thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. And we wish you the best of luck in whatever it is that you're busy with uh, at this point in time. No, thank you very much. And thank you very much for having you. And I wish you also a very good uh, uh, New Year. I, I know that it's not yet there, but you know what? We will definitely get there. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you.